there's some challenges that may come up. Um, you know, different things. Sometimes they're pretty common. Sometimes they're they're uncommon. I know one of the things that a lot of people worry about is if you've had any kind of criminal record. Um, that is something that's going to need to be investigated. Divulge everything that you can remember about that thing. Oftentimes it was a long time ago. Um, even if it's been expunged, let your social worker know. Don't be afraid to tell them the full truth. They're going to work through you, you know, th those issues, talk to you about what happened, why it happened, how you took care of it, those kind of things. And then they're going to present it to the country in a way that the country is going to hopefully be able to accept and say, okay, this, there's, there's not an issue. Some criminal issues will in some countries, absolutely, you'll be cut out. You won't be able to adopt. And so it's really, I think it's really key if you do have any um, issues to, to divulge that early on yeah. so that your agency can help you to, to work through that. What are some of the other, like, just kind of challenges or, or maybe frustrating things that you ran, you've run into in, the, in your processes? Uh, yeah, that I do want to reiterate on the, the criminal record that some countries will you know, depending on, on what it was, you won't, you know, you will be eliminated. Mm -hmm. but, but that's why it is important to, to divulge that right up front. Mm -hmm. and, and also the social worker can work through it because some things are really minor and happened long ago and it, and it might not be anything at all. And also if it's been a sponge and if you go to USCIS and you haven't, then it, it can cause you to get an RFE. And I have had that happen with a few clients mm -hmm. And, and USCIS doesn't, you know, that does upset them a little bit when they, it comes back and they, you know, they'll, it's not a sponge to them. They want to know about it. They'll see it. They'll, find they'll, it. they'll see it. They'll find it. Which kind of leads to fingerprints. I mean, what are you guys' experience with doing yeah, fingerprints? fingerprints? That's oftentimes a big deal. A lot of fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, <clears throat> we've done for USCIS a few times, we've had federal local and even like yeah where we've lived the past however many years so we've done a lot of fingerprints that is a little frustrating when you're doing fingerprints for the local the federal and obviously i can see why you have to have it done but i sometimes question why their systems couldn't correspond with each other and yeah. not yeah yeah your social so, worker should be telling you that right away right, right. so if you have but a mom or a dad yeah. or older kids or siblings or anybody that lives with you that's 18 or older they have yeah. to they have to have that then there's some challenges i mean you faced a huge challenge in in change <laughs> you know if you want to talk about that a little bit um yeah so we started in russia and um Let's see, we'd been doing it for about six months. We, um, in, in Russia, was a three-trip country. So you'd go meet the child first, and then you'd come home, do some more paperwork. Then you'd go again for court, come home for 30 days, and you'd go finally get the child. So we met the child. So we'd done all the way up to that point, met the child, came home, and then... Um, Six days later, Russia banned America from Americans from adopting. Mm. So um, we still did our, you know, finished up our court dossier just in case. And we've, I mean, it's, it's, I, it's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my whole life. Just to feel like your child is stuck in an orphanage in a different country and you have no power to do anything about it. And unfortunately those kind of changes aren't even rare because some countries will all of a sudden say, no, you know, or our, or our country will say, we're not working with that country anymore because they don't feel like their process that they're, the, the, the processes that they're doing are, or ethical or, or whatever and, and and those things can happen or there can be a huge earthquake yeah. in Haiti or the you know Haiti right now is changing to Hague and that can you know be something that just kind of there, there's just lots of different things that can happen that can kind of slow you down sometimes and and they're somewhat common and you just gotta kind of be prepared for any of those kind of things to happen 
and it's hard to be prepared. I mean, there's, you can say that to families when they start, that we have no control over anything like that, but it really is devastating. I mean, there's, and it is, you know, and you can look ahead, but you can say, you, that's unforeseen. I mean, nobody saw that happening with right. Russia. I yeah, mean, when that, that happened, happened really because that and was it, like a government kind and of just, you know. it really didn't have anything to do with adoption. It was really no, a, right. a political I mean, it was, issue. Yeah, it was very know, political. Yeah, and, and so, yeah, that's tough. And it's easy, yeah, when you're starting, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I'll keep in mind anything could happen. And it's a different thing when you've met a child, said to this child, I'm your mom and dad, we'll be back for you. And then nothing. And to think she has one year till she's transferred to an adult mental institution. There's nothing we can do about it. I mean... So yeah, be prepared, but also you can't prepare for that. Yeah. yeah, there's some challenges that you can just fix. You know, you can mm -hmm. you can you can fix any well, maybe not all criminal issues, but you can work through those things. You can work through maybe a national natural disaster. You can work through holidays. You right. can work through yeah. um, people losing stuff. You, you know, these things happen. And you can work through them. Um, some things you can't work through at all. Well, even things. like with Russia, it was not like in November, they had just signed with the government saying that right. they wouldn't do that, that yeah. they would process any adoptions mm -hmm. and that they wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with like Guatemala. When Guatemala shut down, the government said, we'll grandfather any cases and that they will go through. And yet there's still some kids that are still stuck in Guatemala five years later. So. Sometimes you just can't, you know, you can't foresee some of it. Although yeah. luckily all of the cases that, you know, that, that I was working on in Guatemala, they, all those children were able to come home. But there are unforeseen things that happen and sometimes children don't come home from countries. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that is devastating. The first little boy also that we were um, trying to adopt from China passed away in yeah. the middle of... And that happens too. Because you just think if we had just done this faster. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and that's, that's, that can be really hard. There's some real challenges, and I think um, what you do is you work through the ones you can, and then you survive the ones that you can't work through. Yeah. Yeah, you do, and it, it would have been easy to say, okay, we're done, but there were still 57 million children in orphanages, and it's yeah. worth it. it. You know, it's worth it. It's worth, if it's our heartache, well, we wouldn't have our little boy if we'd have quit, so it's still worth it. Mm -hmm.